Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs. We're here with Arroyo High School B versus Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. I'm Crusader Kid and going to be a caster for today. And really quickly just to run down some information about the High School Star League Playoffs. This is going to be the Swiss format Round 1 Week 1. Uh, if you want to know more about how our playoffs work, the whole schedule, the brackets and everything, you can find all that on hsstarleague.com. Let's go ahead and check out our website there and find everything there. So, anyway, we're going to get into this game here. It's going to be a best of three match. And uh, winner of this will be getting pretty much a point. Once again, Swiss format, check it out. I'm terrible at explaining it. Website will be slightly better. So, let's go ahead and get the rundown of the champions here. Of course, we didn't see the champion select. Uh, this is going to be a... Hold on while I'm getting everything sorted out. Alright, so this is going to be Jax and Shivana up versus each other in the top lane. In the jungle, it's going to be a Kha'Zix and a Pantheon. Middle lane, middle laner is going to be Soraka and Orianna. And down in bottom lane, it's going to be a Caitlyn and a Janna versus a Lucian and a Leona. Alright, so... Should be a pretty interesting game coming out here. Uh, I'm really excited to see what these two teams bring to the stage. But looking over at champions so far, we're seeing uh, once again the the OP purples coming off. Kha'Zix, Jackson, you know, kind of Soraka. She's pretty purple, but it's just kind of a trend we normally see here. A lot of champions that are just really strong. They're all purple, and you know, no stranger here. We're seeing two of them picked up. Kha'Zix and Jax, both amazing duelists, pretty much having just you know extra stats, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to go into depth about it, but. Soraka as well, just being an insanely strong top mid laner, uh, not really support anymore, but a lot stronger being a battle Soraka, and that's why we're seeing her in the middle lane this game. And uh, Janna for the support is actually really interesting for Arroyo High School B. You definitely don't see a lot of Janna anymore, she's kind of falling out of the favor, but you know they have two supports, so maybe the Soraka is going to make up for the, uh, the things that you lose when you pick up a Janna support. Talking about strong supports, though, Leona is no stranger to being a strong support. Having a lot of CC in this game, probably the highest CC champion for supports here. And we're going to be seeing her picked up with a Lucian, a high damage AD carry, and that should really make out to be a really good lane. But they're going up against Caitlyn and Janna, both strong lanes. They have some nice disengage as well coming out with Janna. Kaylin's able to have the non net if she needs to get away from something. So they should be a fairly safe lane. They're also going to be having a lot of poke, which might do well versus the Lucian and the Leona. However, it's always, of course, really difficult to trade against a Lucian and yet a Leona into that. And it's even harder. So that's that. Up in top lane, Jax versus Shivana. These two champions probably going to be seeing a lot of farming out of these two. Uh, Pre-level 6, Jax probably has the advantage here. He's just a really strong duelist overall. And neither of these top laners taking the teleport, which is what we see a lot out of top laners, just so they can get around the map, have a global presence. Both of them picking up the ignites here. Jax, of course, going for ghosts. Fairly standard. But so far, Jax is actually pushing up to this tower. But uh, they're pretty much even on CS. CS counts so far in the early game as well. Ariana slightly ahead of Soraka, who will probably have no... Doesn't have the hardest time CSing. She always has that star called the Green Down. But she might be harassed out of the lane here. But she always has that heal as well. Also has summon spell heal coming out for herself. So two heals coming out on the side of Ario High School B. And actually bottom and engage coming off here. There's a damage we talk about coming in. But it's returned right back from Caitlyn and Janna here. Throwing down these auto attacks really... And always the Tornado, of course, is a great tool in trading. And Leona, of course, pays for it. Being against two ranged champions, once she wants to back out, she will be hit by Caitlyn, by Janna. And she will be taking some punishment for attempting an engage here. So, of course, has to be careful with that. Junglers so far haven't seen too much of them. Might be seeing a Pantheon gang coming up here on this top lane. Both very good early game junglers. And... Pantheon, a really strong ganker. Here he comes in for the gank. They're trying to dodge out of the stun. They both get stunned by the counter strike by Jax. Leap strikes away. Is he able to get out of there? Bottom lane. Lucian is down low to the point of near death. Of course, he does have the heal for himself if he needs it, but is has gotten low in that lane, and it's the poke coming out of Caitlyn. Really strong in the early game. And uh, it's going to be difficult for Lucian to just find some answers until he gets farmed up past the mines, and he's able to trade a lot better because, of course... 
He's going to have a lot more damage coming out because of the fact that his abilities are a lot more useful when it comes to trading, uh, especially into the later game. But top lane, we're seeing some action coming down here. Ignite is dropped onto Shivana. Flashes away, actually, and Jax was looking like he might have wanted to go back. Of course, he did a leap strike up if he wanted it, but Flash blown from Shivana and don't really know if she actually needed to use that or not, but of course, I guess better safe than sorry. Five minutes and no first splits coming down. Might change here, though. Bottom lane, Flash burned by Leona as well. And our Arroyo, Arroyo High School B really taking some nice early leads here against the Manhattan, Manhattan Center with Science and Mathematics. I think I'm just shredding that name because uh, it's a fairly long name, a lot longer than your normal uh, school name and then high school. So, I'm going to be forcing out the bottom lane here of Manhattan Center. Arroyo High School definitely looking good here in this early game. A lot of the lanes really picking up these advantages. Uh, top lane, 10 CS ahead. However, middle lane, 40 CS on Oriana for Manhattan Center. Only 28 for AHS uh, for Soraka there. So it might be a bit of difficulty in the middle lane. Top lane, we're seeing the trades coming in here. Jax opted not to go back. He might be paying for it, though. He does take a lot of damage in that trade. But of course, it does deal quite a bit back to Shivana. He might be forced out after this one. And actually, we are going to be seeing Kha'Zix coming up top lane for a gank. And he's going to be trying to catch on to Shivana here. Looking, there's the leap coming out. Jax isn't there to follow up just yet, though. And she's looking to try and get away here. Flashing in here. There's Jax following up as well. First blood goes down. It goes over to Kha'Zix. Unassisted first blood right there. And they pick up the kill. Overextended Shivana coming out. And first blood, I'm going in, picks up the kill, AHS, picking up that early lead, and then the Kha'Zix, no less. Getting that early lead on Kha'Zix for the jungle, really great, obviously, for them. He is just such a snowball champion. I personally love to ban him because he is just insane in the snowball, or he's just insane when he snowballs in the jungle, able to, you know, just leap around in team fights, get back, get to your backline, try and take them down. And then it's, he's going to be very difficult to kill. Him and Jax are going to be very difficult to kill because they have a Soraka, they have a Janet that both can you know, put down defensive stats onto somebody on the team, not just those two bruisers, of course. So it's going to be a fairly good team fight composition coming out. Same can be said, though, for MC Manhattan Center. They have the, a lot of lockdowns and stuns. They have a lot of uh, CC in general, I should say, actually. Uh, Leona obviously has... Quite a bit of her CC, as I mentioned before. Pantheon has a stun. Shivana kind of has a knockback. But the Shockwave as well, coming out from Oriana, is really good. Because they have three champions that can dive in. In Pantheon, Leona, and Shivana. You throw down the Shockwave onto one of those. And you're bound to get a good one going down. So, they could be really be good. Because there's not a large amount of CC. Or, not a large amount of hard CC on the side of AHS. Of course, um, you know, they have the Jax for his stun. As well as... Uh, Janna for her knockback or knockups, but pretty much uh, Soraka and Kha'Zix don't bring too much to the table in terms of hard CC. They have a slow and a silence between the two. But other than that, aren't able to put out too much CC. And of course, it's useful in trading or ganking, but not as good in team fights for locking down the enemy. Seeing wards taken down. Eight minutes in, might be seeing these two guys wanting to go for a ban, but we are going to be seeing Kha'Zix is actually sealing away the red buff here, so really good heads up move by him. Going to go ahead and take away this red buff from Pantheon, and Pantheon's definitely going to get hurt by that. The thing is, he hasn't gotten any good ganks off in this early game. I don't think he's gotten any ganks off in the early game. And it's obviously really important for him. He's another of the snowball junglers. Uh... And Kha'Zix obviously getting a nice advantage from this. Bottom lane, a bit of a trade going down here. Exhaust actually being thrown down. There's a Soraka Wish coming around. The Colin coming around as well. Just put down some damage. Bottom lane trades going in the favor of Manhattan Center. But uh, you could argue that it did go even. Meanwhile, Kha'Zix was able to see that red buff get away as well. Soraka Wish helped in that bottom lane as well as him as well. Uh, as well as him to escape from that. Because he was seen trying to seal that away. Bottom lane trades coming down here once again, and whoa, here is going to be the ace and hole heal and blocked by Leona. Probably only needed one of those there, but they do get some health back, and they'll opt to stay in lane after that. And once again, poke coming out from Caitlyn, really doing a number on Lucian here, and they're just not able to get these all-in trades that they really would want to go for. So not going too well for them right now. Middle lane, still been the farm fest, but still... 
20 CS lead coming out for this tight end Manhattan Center's Oriana. Top lane as well. Jax is holding a very dominant CS lead. 30 CS ahead of Shivana. And he is going to be picking up items for that. Most likely going to Trinity Force. Uh, Blade of the Wind King and bottom lane. We're going to be seeing the Pantheon Grand Skyfall will be dropping in here. They're locking down Kaelin. She flashes away. There's a channel coming down. He flashes in, goes for the stun, but the knockback. He goes right into the tower, which right into the Cossacks. I'm going in, picks up the kill onto XCOM. Now they'll be chasing after Broken Rain Trouble Leap coming in. Flash away. They switch, change their attention over to Warlord Pro. They get into the tower, take some tower shots. Nice stun coming out of Leona right there to just stop that dive from happening. And that was a really good move right there. The Janna ultimate back into the tower, back into the cosmos. Meanwhile, top lane actually attempted dive coming in here. Flash burned by Shivana. Ignite is still up for Jax. He could possibly just dive under this one. But he might be, uh, Shivana might be just be too healthy at this point. But we are going to be seeing this dragon going down and going back once again to that move. Really nice synergy coming up. That's the Janna plays you don't uh, normally see, but it's really awesome when you see it. Knocked him right back into the tower. The tower shot, I think, was taken by the shield, but still, Kazus was there, leaped in. They were able to get the counter gank going. It's done really well. One of the strengths of Janet is, of course, the counter ganking. So, first two kills of the game here, 11 minutes in, goes over the side of I'm going in on Kazix on AHS. And that is going to be great for him. He's able to get his snowball rolling once again, as I've been saying. Because it's just, it's snowballing Kha'Zix is really scary. Uh, in team play, it might be easier to shut him down. But in solo queue, solo queue, he's definitely a monster. So we'll be seeing a Spirit of the Elder Lizard. As well as it looks like a Hex Drinker coming up soon for him. And Magic Damage, it's, there's not the most Magic Damage on the side. That actually might just be a Mercury Treads and... Long or something else. That would actually make a lot more sense. You need the Mercury Treads to um, have, you know, you need the tenacity against the CC and the lockups that they have on the side of Manhattan Center. Hex Drinker won't be too worth it. I mean, Shivana has some magic damage. Oriana has a lot of magic damage. But other, th other than that, not too many magic damage threats on either of these teams, really. So, I wouldn't expect any uh, heavy MR to be coming out, except for, you know, these mid laners picking up Chalice and whatnot. So build, other builds coming in here, we are seeing Jax, he is going to be building up two smaller items, has the build rider cutlass, as well as the phage, and he'll be building those into his two core items that I mentioned before. We're also going to be seeing spirit of the other lizards on both of these junglers, and they're really just both aggressive junglers, and they definitely benefit from the other lizard stats and effects. Athene's and Holy Grail on both uh, mid laners, not surprising at all. And we're going to be seeing Lucian and Kate, Caitlyn, both going for Bloodthirster coming up. Supports are seeing a bit of a difference here. They do have sight some, but of course they did go for different gold pretends. It makes sense though. Targon's brace on Leona definitely very worth it because she's melee for one thing. And uh, Talisman on Janet is going to be great for when she wants to disengage or engage. Going to be running into Kate uh, Oriana here. I'm going in. It really has just been a pretty aggressive factor in this game, but he does have to be careful. Three members of the side of uh, Manhattan Center were around that blue buff area. But it was secured, so... We will give it that. 13 minutes in here. Definitely a lot more of a farming game for both of these teams here. Kills have been... There haven't been that many gank attempts, obviously. Uh, you know, we've seen a few, and now those two results in the two kills. But other than that, not too many. And that's really surprising uh, when you see the teams that they have. I mean, they have the really aggressive junglers. And the ideal lanes that would be ganking are probably the top and bot. Because bottom lane for Manhattan Center has obviously the huge lockdowns coming for them. But just haven't been seeing it too much. Obviously, they've been kind of boxed out of their lane here. They are going to be taking... Some damage onto that tower, but not quite taking the tower. Kha'Zix, here's the gank we were waiting for. Coming in here, Broken Rain gets knocked out by the Tornado. Solify comes down, Janna ultimate back once again. Broken Rain gets the Zenith Blade over. And is trying to get away. Ace Noel coming out here, does a lot of damage. I'm going in, this is an attack away, gets the kill. He's 3-0, and zero. all kills in the game so far. And he's now on a killing spree. And this is just gonna, a problem that's going to get out of control here. They'll be putting some damage onto this tower. Should be able to take it here as well. 
Not too much Warlord Pro can do about this. He'll have to go back. First tower of the game goes over to ROYO High School B. They also got the first Dragon, of course, which is respawning in two minutes, as well as the first three kills of this game. And so far, are looking really good to take an advantage in this game. They're 4,000 gold ahead. Well, they already have the advantage, but taking a victory in this game, they have the 4,000 gold ahead. So definitely looking good. But remember, guys, it's a best of three. Anything can happen for one thing in this game, but in the subsequent two games that are following. So we'll be seeing how this all plays out. Trades coming in here. Mantheon is actually coming in for a grand skyfall. Flash away being used. Heal coming in as well. And then they make a speedy disengage right there. A lot of stuff being used to get out of there, but they are able to. Heal probably wasn't needed. Flash was just enough, I think. But still able to escape. Gets out of that. It was uh, Pantheon gank so far. I've not been working out for him. He is 0 and 1. The one death, of course, coming in from a counter gank by the side of AHS. So Manhattan Center. 16 minutes in, nothing has changed for them here. There's a shockwave coming in onto the middle lane. He's up, he's gonna be taking a lot of damage here. Heals coming off, save Soraka. I'm going in on a rampage, four and zero. And he has just gone wild with this game in terms of kills. Middle lane gang coming in there, working out well. And that was just, you can't underestimate the heals coming out of Soraka. And hold on, he might be picking up a five kill here. Leona is backed up against the wall here. He's taking a lot of damage. Jason will come and go. Jumps in. Gets the fifth kill. Warlord Pro X is now in trouble. Flashes over the wall. But he follows. Gets the double kill. And he's 6-0. and zero, 16 minutes in. And this is just a lead that is going to be out of control at this point. Dragons up in 20 seconds. But they're making their way over to the middle lane to pick up this tower. And they should be easily able to. So it should be the very, fairly easy tower. Four man push coming in here. And this is going to be great here. Aoyo High School B have pretty much won all their lanes here. Bottom lane, top, uh, bottom lane and middle lane have picked up the first towers of the game. The jungla has gone wild and has just helped out all of his lanes. Top lane, once again, huge CS lead that just keeps getting bigger. 156 to 67. That lead is uh, probably not going to be closed in anytime soon. Second dragon of the game gets over their Aoyo, Aoyo High School B off of that. And if I'm mispronouncing that name, I apologize. So it looks like he'll gonna be coming in. I'm going in. Once again, he wants to go in. He does get stunned up. He might be going down the first time this game. Shockwave comes in. The heal's coming up. There is the Jane Ultimate coming around trying to save a jungler who's six in jail. But he just wants to go right back in. Ellis Witch does get taken down to XCOM. I'm going in though. He's godlike. He's getting stunned up though. He's going down solo. Gets the double kill. Four. And now they'll be taking, cleaning this one up here. Unless LT Tran can finish this one up. The Star Call's coming down big. He's able to force him away. He's going for a double kill here. Auto attacks. Bananas picks up the double kill. And we'll be able to get out with that one. It's a 3 for 3 trade right there. And a really aggressive move coming off. And the first three kills of the game for Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. However, Aroyo High School B is able to respond in turn with their own three kills. They do, however... Finally, take down. I'm going in. He was legendary from that fight. 7 0. They get taken down now 7 and 1. So, a little bit of interruption in his killing spree right there. Pant down the course to pick up his first two kills of the game. Leona as well gets one. So, not the best person, Leona, to get the kill, obviously, being the support. Pant down getting some kills will be helping him out here because so far he's been low impact in this game. However, that was a really nice move. The shockwave just pretty much pulled everyone together. The cooling came down. However, not that much AoE to follow up. Besides that, Jan Ultimate came down to heal your team Soraka as well. Just really keeping some people alive in that fight. Both the car, though, getting caught out here. Taking a lot of damage. And he is going to be getting low after that one. Unless Witch now in trouble. XCOM is going to be chasing after here. I'm going in, though. He's coming in from the side. Heal's coming out to try to get this one in. Yeah, I'm going in. Does get stunned up while he gets in there. Warlord Pro does go down on the Endless Witch with the kill. XCOM now in trouble. Gets slowed down. He'll be going down. I'm going in. Makes it 8 1 and 2 for his score. And they'll be chasing after Broken Rain, but he is going to be out of there. As we can see. And they'll be backing out of this one. Blue Buff. They'll say, I like that, I'm going in, smites it down, takes it. And once again, dominating trades is coming out here for ROYO High School B. And they have just been looking so good this game so far, 19 minutes in. I mean, Manhattan Center for his Science, and hold on, might be seeing some trades coming around here. Looks like Toppin is Mipshin now, Stun going to be coming in here onto Fluffy Panda, Varys is chasing after. 
he is ready for a fight, being 0-0 zero, zero, and 0 in this game. Only champion to have, or only play to have a clean scoreboard right now. And he's definitely looking to change that right now. He has farmed up a lot, has the Trinity Force 20 minutes in as well as a build draw to cut this. Most farm in the game. And he is looking strong. It's the farmed up Jax, not the fed Jax, the farm Jax. And that's probably the scariest Jax because... You might tend to under mess. Under mess. Oh, yeah, I go get. He's gonna be jumping in. Everyone's gonna be jumping in. Various gets the first kill of the game. The trying to dive onto endless switch. The exhaust does come down. He is without any health. The heals coming in though. He's still able to survive. So many heals. Jet ultimate coming in here as well. Meanwhile, to the side, double kill coming in. Felthy Panda does go down. The Lieutenant Tran gets the kill. Ezoff is trying to get away from this one. They're still chasing after, and the Ace comes in. I'm going in with the kill. And man, Endless Witch just got dived down by XCOM and Fluffy Panda, but the heals coming out of Lieutenant Tran and Bubble Hikari just saved him right there. And now they'll be getting two inner towers in this game here. It's going to be five towers to nothing, 16 kills to none, and it'll be close to a 15,000 gold lead coming in. Very, very close. So this game has just spiraled out of control. Arroyo High School and being out, able to win out in these team fights, as we just saw. 9, 1, and 3 on I'm going in. First two kills of the game as well, coming out from various, so he'll be very happy about that. Picks up that bull draw to cut list. He has pretty much hit a huge point in Jax's build where he's completed his two core items. He is going to be strong in this game now. And we'll see how this one goes for him. Other items coming here, Mikhail's Crucible coming out from Janna. And that, that's what I saw coming in there. I was wondering, I was like, what is that particle effect? It was the Mikhail's Crucible helping to save the AD carry. Endless Witch. And Tan Chan also had a piece of that. Ezoff! Whoa! That was a lot of damage coming out of the side of Various. Just jumps all over him, picks up the kill. Ezoff, 0, 4, and 3. Same thing here for Warlord Pro. And they have not done well at all this game. The entire team, I guess you could say, Manhattan Center, not been doing well. Baron's going to be coming in here 22 minutes in. And this should be a fairly easy Baron coming out of the side of Arroyo. However, the Grand Skyfall does come in very early, and he'll be blown up right when he gets in there. The Pound Entry goes down. And that, yep, that's going to be the Surrender Ball coming in here 22 minutes in. It's the victory from Arroyo High School B. They pick it up. You also get the first Baron of the game, so they pretty much get first for everything in this game. However, guys, it's a best of three, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Arroyo High School B versus Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics in the High School Star League Season 1 playoffs. It's a Swiss format, round 1, 1-0 one in favor of Arroyo High School B so far. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the high school Star League League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs. It's a Swiss format round 1 and here with Ioyo High School B versus Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. In this best of three match, Ioyo High School up 1 to nothing. I'm Crusader King, going to be a caster here once again and should be getting into this exciting match. So we'll be seeing what's coming up here. So anyway... As I was saying, Arroyo High School up one to nothing. The teams have switched sides, so we'll be seeing Manhattan Center over on the blue side and Arroyo High School over on the red side. This game, once again, I'm going in. Gets the Kha'Zix. Um, and it's not the best choice. Kha'Zix last game, he went seven to nothing before going down finally, and even in the end, he had a very high score. So. I'm not too sure what the bands went to last game, or, or for both of these games really, because uh, obviously casting off a replay, we don't see the champion select. But apparently they're just going to let the Kha'Zix slide through once again, and it's questionable. Kha'Zix last game had a huge impact, and he has the potential to do it once again. So we'll have to see what happens from that, because Kha'Zix coming in, I'm going in, he's an, he played like an absolute monster last game. And we'll see how he fares in game two. Anyway, to get the whole lineups going on here, we're going to be seeing Trundle versus Shivana up top. And we saw Shivana last game on Manhattan Center for Science Mathematics, so that champion makes a switch over. In the jungle, it's going to be a Lee Sin and a Kha'Zix. In the middle lane, Oriana and Nidalee. We saw Oriana last game on Izaf. Uh, did not go too well for him. However, we'll see how he does this game. Bottom lane is going to be Quirky and Zyra versus Caitlyn and Sona. So, no Janna this game. They go for the Sona, which is another support that you don't see too often. <laughs> Sona is another support that was really popular. Like Season 2, Season 1, and now it's just nothing. Same thing like Janna. So, both of Kari, obviously, he's like he's liking these old school supports. He doesn't, doesn't want any, any of that heavy engaged supports. And it worked out last game, he was against Leona, ended up doing really well against that. And of course, it was a Lucian and a Leona lane that they were up against, so fairly short-ranged. Uh, a lot of all-in really coming out of Leona as well. And they had the Caitlyn, Janna versus them for the side of Arroyo High School. And it worked out really well. Uh, they got a lot of poke going down, they are able to disengage it really well off of Leona. In, ge in general, the lane just went really well in favor of Ayoyo High School. Lee Sing actually gets over the wall, finds Kha'Zix, finding a lot of damage onto him as well. He's fairly low after doing two buffs, but is able to leap away from that one. So XCOM trying to get an invade going. Doesn't really work out, and he might be in a bit of trouble though, because he has taken quite a bit of damage. Varys is coming down here as well. Everyone's grouping up, they're trying to get the content. Flash fails, but he does get the heal. He will be able to escape. So... Anyway, some bit of early trading going on here. I'm going in. Last game was a very dominant general. You're taking a lot of buffs around the area. He just got pretty much one red buff seal that worked out really well. XCOM goes for a really early red buff seal, but he's a little bit too slow. Comes right as I'm going in, picks up his red buff, and uh, is unable to seal it away. Anyway, this bottom lane here, though. Uh, last game, the Caitlyn Janna worked very well against the Lucian and Leona. This game... Caitlyn and Sona is fairly similar. Both of them, there's a lot more poke actually coming out of uh, Sona, a lot less disengage really. But they're going up against a not very aggressive lane. They're going up against a kind of another poke lane like them, Quirky and Zyra. I mean, they're not quite the all-in champions. Of course, uh, no one on their excuse me, no one on their lane is tanky like Leona would have been. So, might be seeing a bit more of a passive bottom lane coming out this game. Just as what we're seeing here. Of course, they do have a lot of poke coming out from both of them, so they might just be going for a lot of those trades as well. Last game, we saw Jax really get advantage up in the top lane against a Shivana. This game, Varius picks up the Shivana. He was Jax last game. Fluffy Panda goes for the treadle now, so we'll see how Varius can do. It's kind of a, uh, here's a taste of your own medicine, which your medicine last game wasn't very effective. Uh, it was like a very high CS lead for the side of Varius. He was completely farmed in that lane. He was 0 0 and 0 by like 15 minutes into the game, but he was far into the most CS in the game. He got into the got into the team fights and he just started wrecking people down. So we'll see how he does in this game because last game, based on previous experience, it did well. 
In this game, we are seeing the CSD coming through, although obviously not as big just yet. Looking over at junglers this game, once again, we're seeing a Kha'Zix. Lee Sin coming in here as well. And Lee Sin is actually a really strong early ganker. Um, what we saw last game with the Pantheon jungle. Really strong early gankers, but wasn't very utilized by the side of Manhattan Center. They had a great early ganker in Pantheon. They had a Leona down bottom lane, and they just never got successful ganks off there. And it did not go well, and Kha'Zix just kind of got out of control with that. So... XCOM taking or trying to get that get that red seal. Probably put him behind, had to burn his flash as well, but I'm going in, hasn't made any gank attempts anyway, so neither of the junglers lost too much out of it, apparently. And five minutes in, we haven't seen any ganks coming off, and once again it's really surprising to see these kind of snowball early game junglers and oh bottom lane night gets thrown up, but these snowball early game junglers not going for any gank so far. Alright, so both of them go back. They're going to be going for Spirit of the, Elder, of the Elder Lizard. Not too surprising at all. Those kind of builds coming out from them. Everyone else is pretty much building standard. Various has gone for the Giant Spot. He went back early after pushing up that wave, and he is still in the lead in terms of CS. Looks like Izuff going to be running into I'm going in here. Possibly the other way around. Lieutenant Tran, he's going to be looking to help out. Goes out the spear, does some nice damage, and Izov is going to be running right back into his jungle. Looks like he will be safe, but did take quite a bit of damage from that exchange. But looks like he'll be going back. Same thing actually for uh, Lieutenant Tran. So, CS yeah, so far, it's in the favor of Izov. Last game, Izov was fairly dominant in CS. Uh, pretty much the only lead that uh, Manhattan Center had last game. Obviously didn't work out too well, Izov did not go well in terms of KDA for all the CS that he had. Is that how he does this game, because this game once again he's looking to get some of that going for him. So I get, I'm guessing they banned Soraka, because you're seeing a Nidalee pickup coming around as uh, in this game. Soraka really strong, he might have banned Jax as well, I'm not too certain though, but... It's definitely possible, those are two strong champions in the last game, but I'm just surprised that Kha'Zix somehow... S uh, got through the ban phase. Of course, I'm sure Braum was used for a ban. Uh, Braum is not banned, uh, not auto banned, I, or globally banned, I suppose. In the high school Star League, just so you guys know. Anyway, game two. So, stakes are high here for Manhattan Center. Obviously, if they don't win this, it's the it's a best of three. So it goes the win goes over the Arroyo High School B, and they advance in the Swiss format. Swiss format slightly difficult to explain. You can check all of it out at our website lol.hsdarley.com if you wanted information about that uh, about the format really. But it's just a way that we can get all these group stages played in quickly, because what we're seeing is we're seeing the top thirty two teams from the fall split and the top 32 teams from the spring split or semesters I suppose and they're playing in this season championship so we're seeing old teams and the new teams if you want to find out more about the older teams you can check that they're out the VODs on our Twitch of course twitch.tv slash hsdarly which you're probably watching on right now or our youtube youtube.com slash highschoolstarly good bottom lane we see some engages going down unless which gets low first bike goes down there is crescendo going off as well there's the advance with the valkyrie trying to get in there flashes under the tower gets to the kill but warlord pro uses the heal now he has to get away damage coming in from soda and the minion the minion waves coming up beating of the train can they pick up the kill the minion shots come in and bubble the car gets the kill probably 75% minion damage there xcom finds i'm going against steal away another buff we saw last game but now he's caught out top lane is coming in here fluffy panda trying to find xcom i'm going to try to turn it around fluffy panda with the kill various is unable to help and fluffy panda now might be in a bit trouble because ease up is actually coming in here shockwave is missed because the flash goes over the wall various is able to get away but i'm going in he got a successful buff steal last game but this game doesn't quite come out in his favor this time did steal the buff but did not get out there safely so 
two to two now in terms on the board here. A lot of action coming around across the map. Bottom lane trades going down though. This one on top lane, Fluffy Panda, possibly gonna get ganked here. He's in between two members of the enemy team, and they are looking for blood right now. Bottom lane, Broken Rain coming back in here. Oh, they're bunched up here. Goes to the Sarah. Unless Wish gets caught in it. Gets caught in the ultimate as well. Gonna go down. Roller Pro X with the kill. Now Bubble Hikari is gonna be taken down here. Valkyrie under the tower to pick up the kill. Double kill for Roller Pro X. And that is the damage coming out from the Zyra Quirky lane. Really just a burst of it coming down there. And it's just one thing. Zyra planes have a ridiculous amount of damage. It's really annoying to lane against. And uh, definitely a thorn on the side. Of the bottom end for Aroyo High School B. Oh man, so. 3 1 for Corky now. He has definitely picked up this lead. Gonna be going for the Bloodthirster. Possibly Trinity Force afterwards. Bloodthirster for Caitlyn as well. Not too surprising. Pretty much the same build path we saw from him last game. Last game, he did very well in that lane, but this game, definitely a lot more of a contest here. As well as Aria High School B. They're going to be looking for this dragon. Got their first dragon last game. Looking to secure this game. But it looks like they want to go in. I'm going in. Does get the smite down. XCOM though. Trying to get in here. Misses the Sonic Wave. Has to get out of there with the safe bar. Crescendo lands onto both. At the max range. XCOM gets the kickback onto three though. And they'll make a quick escape there. And they will be able to escape as well as both teams disengage. Aria High School B settle for the dragon get. And they're going to be dead even in gold despite the two kill advantage from Manhattan Center for science and mathematics. Top lane and trades coming down. There he is. Duffy taking a lot of damage. Fluffy Panda. But double buffs definitely tilted the lane into his favor right there. Forcing him. Forcing Various away and possibly out of lane and just do golems over here. And that kill did not benefit him at all. He did, he'd been dominant in this top lane but... I mean, once, once your enemy gets an advantage like that, a kill and double buffs, definitely a difficult landing phase for you. Alright, so, the Thane's coming up for both of these middle laners. Bottom lane Sona had one, has one kill, so was able to pick up the Sight Zone early. So not there just yet, misses the snare, but those on the wild goat anyway, gets the knockup going down, Caitlyn's low, gonna go down to the auto attack from Broken Rain, Broken Rain has to flash her away because she is low, but she is able to escape, and this bottom lane has just been so aggressive, and it's been working out well, Broken Rain pushing up to the tower, I'm going in though, though he's ulting in here, he jumps in, he's gonna be going for the kill, gets snared up though, taking a lot of damage, he is seen in the stall, he cannot get away, and does go down, and that was not good by him. Now bottom lane Warlord Pro X diving in under here. Valkyrie's away. Ball coming in and trying to take down Bubble Hikari, but they're unable to. He's able to live with a sliver of health left. Spear coming in. Warlord Pro X probably going to be forced back after that. Or they have two members in this bottom lane. Ease up and XCOM come down here. Lieutenant Tran though, putting some damage onto Ease up. XCOM is here to help him out if he needs it. Those on the kick away once again for some disengage. Lieutenant Chan though flashes in actually looking for still for some kills, but he's gonna regret it here. Gets the heal. Endless Witch is here to help out though. Spear lands onto XCOM. Ace and Hole coming up. Blocked by Iza. Flash. Crescendo on to two once again. Lieutenant Chan gets the kill onto Iza, but will not be able to find the kill onto XCOM who is so low. So trades coming in there, ease up does go down, a lot of kills coming down in this bottom lane once again, 6-3 in terms of kills in favor of Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. The top lane tower will be going down, Various is able to push it while Fluffy Panda was away. So we see that going down, top lane, we'll see the trades here once again, but... So in contrast to the last game, kills were in the lead for, uh, for Arroyo High School pretty much the whole game. For actually the entire game, they had the most kills. This game, we're seeing Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics pick up the early lead. They also had the early gold lead. Once again, Manhattan Center has that going for themselves. They picked up the early. They picked up the first tower last game, which was uh, which was reflected in this game. But Manhattan Center once again answered back very quickly here. However, they do have the first dragon, so they have that going for themselves. First dragon of both 
games so far, and possibly they can get all the dragons in both games, but Broken Rain is taken down as Lieutenant Tran finds him with I'm going in for some help there. And now the Q in coming out from XCOM is in a bit of a risky situation here. Only has ease up to help him out. And Lieutenant Tran does dash away from that one. Six to four now. Broken Rain gets caught out. Not good for him. But he is going for the AP Zyra. AP support Zyra. So he's going. He's pretty much a solo queue guy that goes Zyra or Lulu. Or not Lulu. <laughs> Zyra or Lux or Nidalee. And I don't actually see like Lux support anymore at all. But this is like a season two kind of thing. We go AP. We call support. Really just a mage that just gets no farm but can kill steal anyway. Anyway. Has gone for some extra damage there, and definitely not a bad idea because this bottom lane for them has just been really aggressive, and the damage works out for her because they have to build MR against it because they have a lot of magic damage. Oh, wait, the hole coming off. It's not blocked, and the shutdown comes through. Oh man, Warlord Pro X gets too close. Endless Witch gets the snipe down, and that is the sharpshooter Caitlyn. They're all thinking of, I guess you could say she's a marksman. So 6-5 to five now, and they're going to be closing up the goal lead here. Are you high school? Want to fight back? Shockwave comes out. Gets away with it. So random Shockwave. I mean, I guess, you know, she has blue buff. Doesn't cost too much mana. She'll regenerate back. She has uh, the CDR as well. Well, you know, just use it. Whatever. Doesn't mean anything. Dragon's up in less than a minute. Might be seeing that coming down. Are you high school? They want to keep the one lead that they have this game so far. They can, also, they can also get the first Baron, and the only Baron. Because last game, they pretty much got Baron, and then Manhattan Center surrendered. It was a 20 minute game, and this game is looking a lot different. Manhattan Center have rallied their morale, and they have <laughs> definitely come out strong in this game. So, might be the lanes, I think. The champion picks have definitely changed. Uh, the bottom lane, I think, set the tone for most of The bottom lane and the jungle set the tone for most of the game. And this game, uh, it's uh, Aroyo High School's bottom and jungle that have had the most difficulty. I mean, you stray away from the meta champions, Lucian, Lucian, and uh, <laughs> Lucian and Leona, so popular, but they decide, hey, let's go for the Corky and the Zyra, and look, it works out for them. So, might be seeing that if it comes to a game three. We'll be seeing what they. I'll be very interested to see what they go for for the bottom laners and now they don't really have to ban Kha'Zix anymore because we're seeing that there's a vulnerability and I'm going in Ka going in Kha'Zix which is that he has just not been able to snowball at all so they will be able to get this uh, dragon it looks like here not gonna get stolen away two dragons of the game going over to the side of Aroyo, Aroyo High School B and that's gonna be nice for them so they have the one lead that they had from last game carried over and they actually have the gold lead here once again with those objectives going down Looking over at CS, once again, Izaf, definitely ahead of Lieutenant Tran. Top lane, Varys is ahead once again, but not as much. Bottom lane, we are seeing the side of Man Manhattan Center's dual lane pick up the CS lead. And actually, the kill lead as well here. Flash away, coming out. Corky Rockets not able to connect. He takes a lot of tire shots there. Varys is making his way down to hold the lane. Meanwhile, middle lane, three-man push coming down. His middle lane tower on the side of Ryo High School is really low. So this could go down here, but... Yeah, this could definitely go down here. There's a lot more wave play coming out of the side of Manhattan Center. Uh, the Zyra and the... Oh, they flash over the wall. You're looking for Lieutenant Tram, but he gets away with the pounce and the flash of his own. I'm going in now, taking some damage. XCOM, though, he takes a spear to the face. However, this is going to mean the... They might be have to back out of the defending the tower here. Manhattan Center pick up the tower. 2-1 to one in terms of towers. And the goalie, though, still securely... Or not even securely. It's only a 300 gold difference. So, slightly in the lead for uh, Arroyo High School. Top lane tower goes down. That changes it. Changes everything. 500 gold lead for the side of Manhattan Center. As you pick up the first three towers of the game. And now they'll be sealing away this blue buff. Easy blue buff coming in for them. 
and then we'll be seeing Mikhail's Crucible from Sona. We saw it last game. Definitely gonna need the heals. They don't have as much heals as they have with the Soraka comp, but they have Sona to kind of make up for that. Because uh, they lost a lot. Nidalee has one heal. But they do ha still have two summoner heals and the Mikhail's Crucible. So they want to keep Endless Witch out of danger. They are able to with those two uh, champions and Mikhail's Crucibles if they want it. Or which they already have. So Mikhail's Crucibles that they picked up. But Soraka definitely huge factor in team fights last game. Endless Witch was just unkillable because of it. So three sweepers very early here from the side of our Ario High School B. Tony Man is saying they already picked up the three sweepers. You usually don't see that around like usually you'll still you'll still see the trinkets like Manhattan Center House, but looks like our Arolio High School B they decided they really want to just get the board coverage going on because so far this game has not worked out well for them. They really just can't rely on the pure damage and the uh just the farm and the kills that he got off of the laning phase. So they definitely have to play a lot more cautiously here, and they're looking to have control over that vision. Which is obviously a very big factor in League of Legends games. They're actually going to be starting to group early here. Shivana headed down middle lane to help push up the way, but she'll be heading right back up to top lane after that, actually. But they want to get this tower siege going. Caitlyn, Sona, and Nidalee, they want to get the poke going. And they have the heals from those two champions, uh, Sona and Nidalee, if they need it. So they're going to be pushing down middle lane. Kaylin just picked up the static shiv, shiv, so she has a lot more wave play than she had before. Of course, it's pretty hard to compete with Zyra with her plants and everything. So and Zyra and Orianna, actually. As you see, Orianna just take out the minion wave and uh, two abilities. But they're making the effort. Trundle is here in the middle lane. So it's a 5v4 push right now, and they actually find XCOM off to the side, clearing out wards, and where they might be caught out themselves. Endless Witch, there is this shockwave coming down. I'm going to get in trouble as well. And they were just not in a good position there. Double kill coming in. They tried to chase after Lee Sim, and he was so slippery. Got away, kicked them back as well. Right back into the uh right back into his own team and had in center. Pick up two kills, and now they'll turn this push around here. 5v4 fight as well. It just really wasn't the smartest idea for Aurelia High School to be pushing at the odd man advantage for the enemy team here. So we'll be seeing Middle Tower will be taking some damage. Snare going in onto two. And they don't quite want to engage under that tower. Crescendo still up on Sona. Shivana is still there as well with her own ultimate. So they're trying to force them out of here. If there's a crescendo coming up onto four right there. Ultimate coming in. Broken rain does go down. Tower goes down as well. The fluffy bandit gets in there. Various gets healed up. He's still running away from this one. He's trying to get away. Bubble and Kari takes down. Uh, gets taken down and shut down. The Lieutenant Tran finally takes down Fluffy Panda. Got way right, way back into the enemy team. Heal will be coming up for um, by both sides for some extra movement speed. So two for three overall, I think. In favor of Manhattan uh, Center, picked up two towers from that push. However, it's the counter push now coming out from the side of AHS. And they're looking to try to take on this middle lane tower, but it's going to be pretty hard. It's 4-1 to right now in terms of towers. 30, uh, dragons up in 30 seconds. And actually, there's the flashback, the kickback, the shockwave comes down. XCOM pitches it over to Ezov, and they get the kill. What a play by those two. Really got the synergy right there. Pitch it right back into a shockwave. And they pick up the kill. Flashy pay coming in, coming in from XCOM. Gets the end sec right there, I guess you could call it. And now they'll be going back after that. So, flashy play coming in. But they do pick up a kill for it. 10-7, to 7, Dragon's up. And Dragon's up in right now, actually. So, we'll be seeing... We'll probably be seeing both of these teams starting to group up around it. And see what they can do. Death cap almost here on Zyra, which is uh, pretty funny to see here. Going for straight, doesn't even go, oh no, she doesn't have sightstone, but doesn't go for any kind of supporting items besides the sightstone, besides the uh, small thief's edge. Just goes right for the death cap. So dragon is going to get started up here, but this time it will be contested. And Ario High School might lose the first dragon of the series here. They'll play Kari, forced to flash away. Wild Goat does come down. A strangling thorns, strangling roots, grasping roots. I don't even know what it's called right now. Strangle thorns coming down, and I guess a few times. Wild growth always confuses me, like wild growth, like the wild growth of the vines. Ooh, flash over the wall, but it's a Lulu ultimate that's wild growth, and 
I've been mistaking it all, this entire game, so apologies about that. But Dragon gonna get started up here. They get over the wall, and it looks like Manhattan's heavy just wanted to pick the advantage off of this one. But Boker Ray gets sniped out by it, and they'll be diving in onto this one here. Still inside the pit, though. Shockwave coming around from the side. Waste. Uh, Warlord Pro is doing some damage. Doesn't get a kill off of it just yet. Spear coming in. Does a lot of damage to him though. Various is on the side. There's a shock. Uh, crescendo over the wall. And XCOM though getting low. He gets the kill for himself. He cannot get away. Lieutenant Tran gets the kill as well as kills coming in inside the pit. Double kill coming in here for Various. Fluffy Man now trying to 2v1. Trying to get after Lieutenant Tran here. But he's kind of fast in that Kruger form. Doesn't get the shutdown though. Changes over the Various. Various is so tanky right now. Does he really want to keep chasing after this one? No, he does not. And he will be getting out of that one for so a 4 for 4 trade coming in from that fight, but the Dragon did go over to the side. Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. So Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics pick up the first Dragon of this best of three series. And right now, they are looking strong in this game. They almost won that team fight. <laughs> um, they got re-engaged on there. The snipe coming around, down from Broken, onto Broken Man from Lieutenant Tran with the spear. Really well done by the side of ROO High School B. And they all died in after that one, although it was a, kind of a split fight for everybody. Some people were still on the dragon, some people were farther up, some people were closer to middle lane, some people were closer to bottom lane. It was kind of a really split team fight. Really difficult to see everything that happened there, but kind of a solo queue esque team fight, I guess you could say. So bottom lane gets pushed in here, but will not be taken down. Looking for some pressure. Varus is 3 and 0. Willow Pro finds him. He is 5 and 3. He does a lot of damage there. Has the Trinity Force as well as the Bloodthirster as well as the Pickaxe. So Last Whisper coming in for him next, I believe. Ooh, Shockwave coming in. Lieutenant Cham is trying to get the <laughs> Lieutenant Cham walked in there to get the ward. I'm not too sure if that was worth it. XCOM jumped in there. He was ready for a insect, but he had enough damage without the kick right there. So junglers this game, it's uh, completely different from last game. X last game XCOM was really far behind compared to I'm going in. Of course he doesn't have the same lead that I'm going in had, but Definitely more of a supporting jungler here, pitching kills back for his team and whatnot. But oh broken ray gets engaged on I'm going in, takes uh Deal some damage here, but he might, now he'll be taking some damage. Next time, wants to jump in. Crescendo coming out, does get a disengage, going in front of the side, ace the whole fight. Broken ray gets the kill. And now that was just a nice snipe coming in there. Everyone was caught off. They couldn't see that happening. They were locked up in crescendo. And from the side, Ace in the hole finds its mark. And gets the kill. Broken Rain does go down. So, still middle lane. Missing a lot of pressure. Willow Pro doing lots of damage. I'm going in. He has to back out of there. And oh, there's a pillar coming down, locks down Lieutenant Tran, he has to get away. Various dives into the back line, but he gets kicked away himself. He cannot see on the back line, he's taking way too much damage. And he'll be going down, he flashes to the wall, XCOM, the shutdown comes in here. Roller Pro is the one to get it. I'm going in now, getting dove under the tower here. Fluffy Panda taking up all the aggro. They're trying to get into the tower as well, there the kill's coming down here, under the tower. Double kill for Warlord Pro, as he's going under the Nexus tower, it's kind of inside of the base here. And they will have to be backing away from this one. XCOM gets slow. There's a spear coming around and goes. Or gets dodge, I guess. 3 to nothing. Shockwave over the wall. Ease up gets the kill. Onto Bubble Hikari. 4 to nothing in that fight. And that was just a really well played fight for them. And it was just uh, Manhattan Center. Way too strong in this game now. So. It's going to be looking really good here. 7 kills on the top laner and the AD carry for this item in Haddon Center. And they are just stacking up on the items now. Last Whisper is finished up by Corky. And we'll be seeing a Blade of the Ruined King coming in soon for this side of Fluffy Panda. I think he has a few hundred gold away from that though. The death cap is finally finished by Broken Rain. Also, it's a Ruby Crystal, so we'll be seeing if that's a Ruby Sightstone, or if it's a or if it's a Haunting Guys. Either would kind of work. It uh, depends if you just want to go for more damage. Sight Ruby Sightstone, obviously not that needed anymore, just with the uh, the vision changes and everything coming in. But if we're looking over at the side of uh, Arroyo High School B, and they're on a build, Shivana. Picked up the two armor items, now going for the, so, yeah, now going for the, uh, Bilge, uh, 
played other Rinny King, just like Fluffy Panda, actually, who actually goes for Brandon Wins Omen. So he actually just wants to build some more defensive stats right now. Besides that, Trinity Force is a good enough big item for some damage. Goes for another defensive item to add on to that Spirit Visage. It's not a bad idea either, because he's pretty much the main tank for his team. Other builds coming in here. Uh, middle laners a little bit more in favor of Orianna here, but still relatively the same builds. It's just a de uh, blasting bomb pretty much lead for the side of Izuf on Manhattan's center. Lieutenant Tran, though, has pretty much built the mirror build, both of them having the death caps and the Athenes and Holy Grail, but we're seeing a lot of pressure around this bottom lane area. As they're trying to push in onto this one, actually Fluffy Panda wants to engage onto this. Gonna get followed up by XCOM here. They're actually gonna be chasing at the variance. They're chasing after the tank. He gets some heals, trying to walk away from this one still. But they got to Ellis Witch this time. There's a shadow coming across with the shockwave. Got the kill. They will be diving in very gets to go into broken man as he tries to dive in onto the back line. I'm going in now. It's his turn to try to get into the back line, but he has to back away because he gets really low from that trade. Will be able to live, but he got too close. Oh, XCOM on the side. Lieutenant Trance saw him. Threw out the spear, got the kill, 1 for 2 trades so far in favor of AHS. Lieutenant Tran though, gonna get chased away by 3 members. Manhattan and Thunder, they have to regroup around this tower here because we're still seeing attempt to push coming out. Lieutenant Tran is looking for some damage with the spears, but he'll be taking some damage from Warlord Pro. Gonna be chasing him, gets over the wall with the pounce, but he'll be forced to go back home after this. After getting low here. Lumuff will be stolen away, dragging his life, so that could be an objective for Arroyo. But, I'm going again, he's alive, he's going to be making his way over, he might be able to steal it away. So we'll see what happens. Makes his way down, a little bit too late though, and actually, whoa, Shivana stole the dragon! I am not sure at all, I... Okay, I was I was focusing in on Kha'Zix, but Shivana got in there, stole the dragon, got away with it as well. And that was just something that completely went over my head. So Varys coming up big there, probably with the skill shot. I think that's the only thing he can have stolen it with. And he, was, he looked far outside of that dragon pit as well, so he gets in there, steals it. Nicely done by him to get his team some extra gold and deny some gold from the side of Manhattan center. 32 minutes in here, it's a 6 kill lead for Manhattan Center as well as a 4,000 gold lead and a 3 tower lead. Not quite the dominating lead we saw from Mario High School last game, but still a lead in itself. And for Manhattan High School to come back in this game, a much stronger team than last game, going up against very similar champions. Really well done by them, Fluffy Panda. Looking for something here. And they'll just settle for the red buff, but... Once again, they're just putting pressure around the map. I'm looking at the top and pressure. Now, Shockwave with a wall into two bubble. Akari gets locked up here. There is a trigger thread that's coming off. Fluffy Panda is right on his heels. Gets the kill on the side. Though, Ezov takes a lot of damage. I'm going again. Comes out of the ultimate. There's Varys jumping in here as well. It's two versus four. And they try to get this. They take down Broken Rain. But they load themselves. The Treadle Pillar blocks the way. Broken Rain with the passive from the grave. Picks up the kill. I'm going again now. Going low. Fluffy Panda is diving under the tower for him. XCOM is here to help out his friend. They get the kill. I'm going again. They kick back Lieutenant Chan. Meanwhile, Endless Witch takes down Warlord Pro, but back over. Lieutenant Chan gets tower dove. Does get taken down. Double kill for XCOM, and she does get the shutdown onto Fluffy Panda. It's XCOM and Isaf still alive. Endless Witch found a kill. Not too sure what happened over on that side of the map, though. But Endless Witch get, does get a kill onto the Corky, which is nice to shut him down and get some gold for himself. Oh, Ease of Sephiroth's on the trap. It's a big mistake. Endless Witch is right there, but she doesn't want to follow up. She is too scared. She actually gets the damage out to XCOM, but she doesn't go for the last auto attack to pick up the kill. She could have picked up two kills right there and let it slide out of her hands. What? Oh my god. If She just had to be a bloodthirsty Caitlyn. And that would have been two kills for her, and that would have meant a lot of gold for her as well. I mean, maybe she was expecting Red Buff to tick it down, but that's not what happened. And, uh, I don't know, I'm a little disappointed in that. I was, I, I was like, oh, this is a double kill for Caitlyn. Doesn't come down. And she'll stay at a 4, 8, and 5 score, which is really unfortunate for her. I'm really sad, actually, after that.
I was expecting big plays. Anyway, it is actually a hunting guys for Zyra. So she has gotten she so she has gone for the damage build. Which doesn't surprise me at all. And there's the damage coming out right now onto Broke uh, Bubble Hikari. And he has a goner after that. That was overkill, I think. Strangle Thorns got used there. Should try and get it. Fluffy Panda coming around, throws on the pillar. Kind of kind of works. That kind of just backfired on him because this uh I'm going in was able to get away from that one at, uh, right like right before the pillar went up. So he got out of there. But Top lane tower is going to get pressure down here. Three members from the side of Manhattan Center are pushing it down. Aroyo High School B have to react quickly to this one, but they do lose the Ted Tran cut off by the pillar. That one works out well. Fluffy Panda with the kill. Now finds on the switch. He's chasing after. He might get kited away right here. The rep buff coming in here. Willow Pro X though. Variance is right on his heels. Gets the kill. And bro Broken Ray was, un was unable to save his friend there. But Varius now going to get chased off by Fluffy Panda, who should be able to pick up the kill. Throws down the damage. Broken Rain actually is the one to take it. The damage AP Zara coming in big for those kills. So two members for one in favor of Manhattan Center. But it looks like they can't continue with this uh, push onto this tower. Of course, they do need the AD carry. It's a pretty big factor when you push down towers. And uh, not having him, definitely a little bit more difficult. So they'll back out. Once again, they just kind of ward around the jungle. 36 minutes in here. Dragons are spawning in a minute 30. Baron is up right now if they want to go for it. Because pretty much the whole team, the Manhattan Center, have to back out. But looks like Arroyo High School B are either unaware of that or not willing to take the risk. Because it's a risky move, but pretty much, you know, when the whole team is back, you can just try and take down that Baron quickly. And now on this wish might be taken down quickly. Here as Fluffy Panda comes in from the side. There's the pillar coming around. This should be the easy kill going on. Relentless Witch cannot get away from that one. And that was just the Trundle way too strong at this point. So now this one being the Baron coming out of the side of Manhattan Center. They had 10 kills in the lead. Almost well, the 6,000 gold in the lead as well. 5 towers up. They'll get the first Baron in this game unless it's stolen away. But we'll see if Varys can pull off the Miracle Steal. It's actually Fluffy Panda. He decides, you know what? You're not going to do that this time. He chases him off. He's up. He's here to help out as well. Pillar comes down just to kind of taunt at them. Baron does go down though. Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. Pick up the first Baron for themselves of this series. Last game we saw this Baron and went down to Ario High School B and pretty much right after they got it, it, it was an immediate surrender coming out of Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. So this game, Ario High School though, still looking to stay and they want to get this 2-0 win here and Fluffy Panda Find two, snare going down onto one, Various, there is the shockwave, the damage coming in, Various tries to get under his tower, double kill goes over to Warlord Pro, and this way middle lane, gonna get taken down here, the tower is falling low, there's a flash, the grasping roots, it comes through, Elizabeth gets caught in the strangle throws, he's able to escape, crescendo onto three, they try to turn this one around, they get under the tower, kills coming down here, heal coming in as well, they try to get away, Ellis Witch gets dived on, Broken Rain gets the curve, Warlord Pro is far back in, but uh, Lieutenant Chair will we get kicked back? He'll be going down. He did get a shutdown, but Roller Pro X flashes trying to get this kill. They can't catch after the Nidalee. And Nidalee will be able to escape, but she is outside of her base. Ran outside of her base here. And you can only watch as the team of Manhattan Center take down these two inhibitors inside of the base. 38 minutes in. It's a 12,000 gold lead. I mean, a 12 kill gold lead. Not 12,000 gold quite yet, I don't think. And actually, they turn around. Lieutenant Champ finally goes down. Warlow gets the kill and the ace. Two inhibitors go down. The ace as well. Dragon is up. Looks like they might be taking out for that. Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics going on an objective spree right there. Really solid play coming out of their entire team right now. Just securing those kills. Securing these objectives as well. They'll be getting back with the boatload of money in their pockets. 3600 to be exact. for uh, 3900 now for Corky. So he'll go back and he'll have a lot of gold. So we'll be seeing an Infinity Edge, I think, coming out from him. Yep, and he has tons and tons of damage with that. Goes for a defensive item now. Smart move by him. Uh, most likely that's going to be the Guardian's Angel. 12, 5, and 10 Corky. Coming up big. 
We're seeing Chunnel nearing the end of his build as well. Has the random zone and has the Blade of the Ruined King to finish it off. And he's going to be going for maybe Guardian's Angel himself. Wouldn't be too surprised. Just makes it harder to kill them, but it's really strong. And I mean, like, they're already, they're already really hard champions to kill. As we've seen, Trundle is just so tanky as it gets into that back line. So this game so far, really dominating performance this game for Manhattan Center. Obviously a lot closer than last game. Uh, obviously a lot closer than last game, but it's going to be Manhattan Center looking to like looking to be like the winning side of this game. And it was just strong all around the play, really. So top lane, we'll be seeing this push coming in here. We'll be seeing if Arroyo High School B can hold this off, but there's been some really good crescendos coming out, but the lockup is just not enough. They, I mean, they have a lot of AoE coming down, but they don't really have enough. I think Nidalee is really single target, and that's actually the... You know, Nidalee's worth that. I was going to be saying some negative things about Nidalee, but so far, if you see the more of those spirits coming down, Nidalee's worth it because she is in the late game right now. Has the highest KDA for a team as well. So those spirits are definitely starting to hurt. And she is really able to kind of get the uh, get the push away right now. But it's going to be really difficult because it's two waves of super minions sieging in onto the base. And uh, five members of the enemy team up at one tower right now. So AHS, they have to spread themselves thin in order to stop, you know, stop the next tower from going down. And it should be a fairly easy inhibitor here if they... If, uh, Red Hat and Zender is just able to walk in, but Fluffy Panda inside the base. Very interesting move by him. They'll be sticking over the wall though. Still looking for an engage here, but they can't really find a hard engage. Broken Rain is really low right now. And it's pretty much an auto attack from Caitlyn or a spear from Nidalee will mean the death of him. There's Jason Hole. No one is there. Oh, no one is there to defend him against the ace in the hole. That was not a hard shot at all, I don't think, for Endless Witch right there. And it was just a uh, not a good push there from Manhattan Center. They have a lot of pressure coming out from the two bottom lane inhibitors being down. Or the two inhibitors on the bottom side of the map being down middle and bottom, I guess. Uh, lower than top lane being down. But they just not they just didn't play that right and they did pay for it. They have to back out. They have to wait for Zara to come out if they really want a really strong push. The Baron buff has expired. They did pick up two inhibitors off of that, but they have to get these inhibitors back soon. The inhibitors are actually spawning pretty much uh, right now. Baron's up in uh, a little bit less than two minutes. Inhibitors are back up. Top lane still has that inhibitor open. And the spear is just kind of... The spear has really worked out well in taking the pressure away from the side of... Uh, AHS. So Manhattan Center now they have to look for an entry right back into this. Zara's still at base. She has to walk, take the long walk back. She's gone for Zani's eyeglass this time though, so she's uh she's looking to be defensive there. If she ever had gets caught one of those ace in the holes again, she can use that to negate some damage. But she has really just built for the AP build, and I mean that doesn't mean she suffers for the tanky side of her. That's why she gets shredded so hard. By these Nidalee Spears, but they kind of have Trundle. He's the front line. Lee Sin as well, building some tank in there. As, uh, so, we'll be seeing this push coming in once again. Looks like they'll be going for middle and bottom inhibitors. They're exposed. And they could easily make a push here. They just have to get these team fights going. They can't get poked down. They have to go for an engage immediately, pretty much here. Otherwise, they'll just get poked down. They just can't continue with the trade. Because they have their better team fight if they go all in. But they get poked in like that. Next time we oh broken rain gets taken down. Couldn't even Zane is various gets into the back line. Ease up gets the kill though. There's a shockwave coming down. I'm going getting gets rocked back and forth right there. Various though getting low. Guts get the double kill for Ease up. And the crescendo didn't work out well that time. World of Pro X does get the kill. This will be the inhibitor going down. This might be the game going down here as well. It's 44 minutes into this game. And looks like oh the spear threads a needle right there. Not even sure how that one hit right there. Lieutenant Tran finds Willow Pro X, but these Nexus Towers are going down low. Lieutenant Tran is getting down low himself. Fluffy Panda is just tanking these Nexus Towers. X Comedy is up and trying to back him up. Oh, though, Fluffy Panda is going low. Looks like he will be able to live. Still 10 and 3 and 15. 
is his score, and he is strong this game. But looks like they might have to back away. XCOM gets low, and this might be the disengage. They can't go for another inhibitor because XCOM gets jumped in on. I'm going in, tries to get the kill onto him. Now changes over to Fluffy Panda. Randu and Zoman's coming off him. They go right back in, though. XCOM does go down to the Chan. Chan. Lieutenant Chan, though, he'll be going down himself as ultimate on Fluffy Panda. And he gets big. Ease up, gets the kill onto Lieutenant Chan. But members of the side of Arroyo High School are respawning. And we'll be seeing Izov and Fluffy Panda take down the inhibitor and make their escape. Two Nexus Towers go down as well. Baron and Dragon are both up. But with the exposed Nexus and two inhibitors down, this is going to be a very difficult game if Arroyo High School want to come back from it. It was a much better team fight from them, this uh, that fight. But things just kind of fell out of hand coming in late into that fight. At the beginning, it looked good. They got some nice pickups going, but Kashano was not on point. Shockwave was not on point either. I know Shockwave was on the team. Kashano was not on point there. A little bit late, I think. And they were unable to kind of mop up that team fight right after picking up some really easy pickoffs there. So Baron's going to be, uh, Dragon's going to be going down to the side of Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. And now their lead is a 14,000 gold lead. And this is just really difficult because it's now extremely difficult for Arroyo High School to be getting out of their base with a Nexus exposed. It would be fairly easy if they lose the... Okay, they had to get the word co coverage for one thing because they had to know when Baron's going down, things like that. They can't just have it come out as a surprise. They want to know as well when... They want to know They want to know if Baron's going down or if Manhattan Center is in the jungle. And they had to be aware of all that because if Baron's going down, then they can know they know that they need to rush over the Baron and try to stop it and try to fight. But they have no wards outside of a few from their base, and they're just trying to defend off the minion waves right now. And it's gonna be a free Baron for Manhattan Center, and with pretty much no vision inside the jungle, Manhattan Center are now on the hunt and looking for kills. They might be finding some in the middle lane here. They're rushing in. I'm going to get him various looking to escape right there. Randu and Zoman coming around. Fluffy Panda gets sped up here. Isn't able to lock down anybody though. But looks like they're just going to be going straight for the Nexus. This should be the game right here. As they get around the Nexus, damage will be coming off here. Will Pro trying to jump in here. The Crescendo will be coming in onto two. XCOM takes some damage, but they're all going to be going in here. They're trying to get out to Broken Rain. Will Pro, XO doing so much air. Shockwave on the side picks up the kill. Nexus is going down while it's saying this. And the fight does end as the Nexus goes down. It's Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. Pick up the win against Ario High School B. It's a best of three. We're going to be going on to the game three to see who picks up the win. Guys, don't go anywhere because this is the High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 playoffs. It's a Swiss format round of one. We'll be right back.
for the side of Arroyo High School B, really out for the back of their jungler, as well as a. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the High School Star League League of Legends Season One playoffs. Welcome back to the stream. We're gonna be getting into Game Three of Arroyo High School B versus the Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. I'm Crusader Kid, and gonna be your caster. And this is the third game, as I said, in the best of three series. It's the Swiss format, round one, so this is the first stage of our playoffs, essentially. If you want to find out more information about our playoffs, how it works, you can check out our website, lol.hsstarleague.com. But this pretty much decides who wins the series. Game three here. Just a recap of the last two games that we saw. First game was a dominating performance to a victory for the side of Arroyo High School B. Really out for the back of their jungler, as well as their bottom lane, just doing really well. Their top lane especially got extremely farmed. Um, and Manhattan Sensei just really weren't able to do too much. Uh, second game, much closer. Manhattan Center obviously picked up the victory because we're here in the, the third game of the best of three. And they just did really well from the beginning. They, they really just kind of made up for the mistakes that they had made in the previous game. So it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. Um, we're seeing a lot of champions that we actually saw from the first game. And we're seeing some champions that are going to do fairly well for what I think is the uh, these guys' play styles. But before we get to that, we are seeing Manhattan Center going for an invade. They were saw, seen by Various. He put down that ward. The Trinket Ward, so they do see that this invader will be coming through, and it looks like they will actually go ahead and seal away this blue buff, but we do see the counter invade coming out from the side as well, Nocturne, and the rest of his crew from the side of Arroyo High School B, going to make their way over to the enemy team's blue buff, and they'll go ahead and seal that away themselves. But anyway, last uh, the first game we saw Janna as a support. It was the support that got themselves to victory. They had a Janna and a Caitlyn down bottom lane, and they did really well. We also saw Kaelin in the second game that did really well on the side of Arroyo High School B. So that might have been banned because this game we're seeing the Ezreal coming out. But he's with the Janna once again. So Janna will be seen with Ezreal. And it's similar playstyles. I mean, Janna obviously we saw first game. It worked out really well for the side of Arroyo High School B. And now Ezreal is fairly similar. He kind of... He's a lot more of an ability-oriented Caitlyn. Rather than Caitlyn who's a lot more auto-attack. But he still has... The you know long range on himself, uh, a little bit less auto attack range, a lot on the skill shot range, and he also has the dash with the arcane shift. Janna we're seeing once again, of course, great for disengage. Also works very well with Ezreal. First game we also saw a Soraka in the middle lane, so we're seeing Soraka here once again, and that Soraka in the middle lane didn't do the best, but what it worked, what what worked really well for that Soraka was that she was able to heal her AD carry, Caitlyn, at the time. Got super heals from uh, Bubble Hikari as well as Lieutenant Tran. And they were just able to keep him alive in the back of the team fights. And you now we're going to be seeing these two champions once again. And with an Ezreal this time, who is arguably a lot more uh, easy to kite with. Just because he has the Arcane Shift, he's able to reduce the cooldown on it. A little bit more mobile because he'll probably build the Trinity Force as well. So. That's obviously really good for them. Nasus, uh, as I was talking about, Varys, he did really well in farm up in that top lane. Both of the games, uh, at least for the early game, he did really well. First game he was on Jax, he was about like 70 CS at one point in the lead. In the middle lane, XCOM actually looking for a gank here. It takes a lot of tower shots for it, so is isn't too successful. But anyway, we're going to be seeing the Nasus coming out, which definitely benefits from a lot of farm. But he's going up against Fluffy Pan, who played Trundle last game. And he was... Hugely successful on that champion. I mean, he was three kills like for 40 minutes, pretty much. Uh, three deaths for like 40 minutes. He, he was pretty much unkillable. He dove into the back line, had the ultimate going. Pretty much just never died. And it's, he's going to be seeing it again. And so far, we're seeing a slight CS advantage over for the set of Fluffy Panda on Manhattan Center. Bottom lane, though, we're seeing the Draven and Annie. It's a very aggressive lane. And that's kind of what I think. Uh, Man, these two guys in the bottom lane favor Broken Rain and Warlord Pro. First game they went with the uh, Lucian and Leona, a very aggressive lane. Didn't work out that well. The, the second game, 
You went for a Quirky and Zyra, while although not, you don't think it's a hugely aggressive lane, they have a lot of damage between the two, especially in magic damage. And middle lane, Ratchet Singh again coming in from behind the 10 XCOM is right here. He's trying to flash. He doesn't get the first blood. Tower shots will be coming through, and there's the kill going over to XCOM, but he flashes and did get the first blood. He was going to go down anyway. Did get in there, picked up a kill before going down himself. Exhaust will be coming out here. Bottom lane, Warlord Pro taking a lot of damage. Flashing for the Tornado Flash away from it. Broken Wing turns around with the stun, with the Ignite. Heal coming up to try to save the support. And it looks like she will be able to live. Bubble Hikari going to be fine after that. But man, that was a very close trade right there. Broken Rain coming up big with a lot of damage. Flash and heals burned a lot. Broken Rain though, Endless Witch gets in there, gets the kill. And now XCOM is going to be coming in here for a gank. He has rep buff. He has a lot of gap closes as a Wukong. They're trying to close the distance. They're going to get onto Endless Witch here, who flashes away. He's going to get under the tower. Willow Pro now trying to trade out here. I'm going in. He's going to be coming to support his bottom lane duo. He'll be coming in. Flash away from the tornado. That's blowing a lot of flashes this game. Two flashes so far for two tornadoes. And two to one now. At the end of that, ex uh, at the end of that exchange, it's Arroyo High School in the lead. So, a lot of action coming down. I was saying, I mean, Draven and Annie are really aggressive lane. They have a lot of damage coming off from them. But Ezreal and Janna, once again, they get the better of this trade, and it's uh, endless witch and endless witch and Belplakari have just done really well in this bottom lane, except for the last game. Obviously, they got. Really kind of just dominating that last game. Hold on, Fluffy Pan up top lane. Ignite onto Various. And this is going to be the first time we see Various at an early game. This is advantage. Of course, he is a Nasus, but we saw him on Jax. We saw him on Shivana. He did very well in the early game. But uh, this game, not too well. It's going to be CS League going over to the side of Fluffy Panda this game, and he is back on the trundle, which we saw him do very well and so he definitely has a lot of confidence going into this game. Playing a champion did very well in, very well on. Izaf, playing Oriana for the third time in this best of three series, has played Oriana all three games, has had some mixed results, and uh, he's definitely comfortable with this champion I guess we're going to see, and we'll see how he does. And now XCOM... I think he, I think I'm going, yeah, I'm going to get knew he was there, so he, XCOM has to back out of there because top lane and bot, uh, middle lane, and we're going to be running in there. A lot of buff skills have been going on throughout the games here. It's been a pretty reoccurring theme here, while these junglers keep trying to go for some buff steals. Shockwave over the wall is actually able to steal away the blue buff. Ease up, takes it, and there's the buff steal. Not from the jungler this time, though. You get close to the wall. XCOM is here to help him out, but I'm going in. He wants to take back the blue buff but lieutenant tran now gets caught out gets slowed down you're gonna be throwing out the heels to try to get away ghost coming out from fluffy panda they dive under the tower wish coming up three heels used and three heels let him escape lieutenant tran will be sticking around to try to defend his tower here this fluffy panda went down all the way down to that bottom lane and top lane that will allow various to push up the wave and get some cs back and get his cs back in the lead here while wow, Fluffy Panda tried to go for some roam, which did not work out uh, in terms of him getting a kill. They did force out Lieutenant Tran. Also burned a lot of his abilities, ultimate and heal and flash down. Actually, flash down previously, but now burned down the heal. So I was, we're able to take down two pretty strong spells. Those heals on Soraka are definitely his strongest point. So eight minutes in, I'm going in. It's Kyrus's red buff. Both junglers slightly lay on the red buff. They did go for a lot of aggression in terms of the uh, the buff ceiling, attempted buff ceiling. Actually, no, they're just no, they're taking the second red buffs. Okay, meanwhile, endless witch doing some damage. Oh, Willow Pro gets taken down. Bottom lane exhaust onto endless witch though. He gets low. Looks like he will be able to survive the ignite. Broken rain, not quite. Enough damage there. And once again, Warlord Pro X just goes down to some damage. So one of the bottom lanes goes down to the damage. Zero one. All the way from mid laner to bottom laner for the side of Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. They're not looking too good this game. Ario High School. Duffy had picked up a nice lead, but it's not as big as the lead of the first game, so there's still a chance for our Manhattan Center. It's early into the game. We'll have to see how they play it from here. Broken Rain takes a lot of damage, it gets taken down. The Ezreal combo coming through. Two shot barrage right on into his abilities. He takes down Broken Rain. 
3 and 0 Ezreal to start out this game is definitely good for him. And Ezreal is a really strong AD carry when he gets Snowball A, so we'll see how that one plays out because so far, bottom lane. Bottom lane for Ario, Ario High School back in action. I mean, we saw first game in favor of, of AHS. Second game, it was Manhattan Center all the way. This game is going to be AHS with, yet again, another really early lead. I mean, you, you think it'd go even with the, uh, with the current trend going on there, but it looks like they're just going to be doing like flip-flops. So maybe if it was like a fourth game, then we'd see, uh, then we'd see Manhattan Center... Manhattan Center's bot lane come back in here, but so far, Janna, really effective, actually. Uh, they were 100% win rate on early trades with Janna, I think. <laughs> and she is definitely really good just for disengage that we've been seeing, and it's worked out really well. Forcing out flashes on the tornadoes and everything is just really insane pressure. But we are seeing Wukong trying to solo this Baron. He will be seen now. I sold the dragon. He's going to flash around to Lieutenant Chan, though, with the knockout. Flash away from Lieutenant Chan. He has heals going for him. Ultimate coming out from Nocturne. Trying to get him off Lieutenant Chan. But XCOM is still trying to go and does get the kill. Broken Rain takes the kill on Lieutenant Chan. But Endless Witch is in here picking up kills for himself. I'm going again. I also got a kill for himself. But the double kill there is carrying two. And so a one for three trade in favor of Arroyo High School. And they'll be going ahead and taking down this dragon which is an easy take for them so 11 minutes in first dragon of the game once again goes over their Arroyo high school they have picked up the first dragon of every single game in this series and this series once again repeat from last game although definitely a lot closer than last game last game was a very very convincing lead but this game Three kills on the side. There's still some hope, but bottom lane we're seeing Endless Witch doing damage under the tower. Auto attacks coming through. Gets the kill. He is unstoppable. Janus Shield tanks up the last tower shot. He'll have lived anyway, but we'll be able to live uh, maybe a little bit longer. Someone comes up here. Top lane Fluffy Panda is tanking damage from various, just getting onto that top tower. Doesn't get the kill on it. So it has some decent damage going there. Wriggles Lantern won't be picked up by Nocturne. He's a very strong Wriggles Lantern jungler. The Wriggler's land, uh, a Frail Flare jungler. Did get kind of nerfed, and it's a little bit harder now uh, to do some damage, and still hard to stack it up. And it's, uh, he'll be getting there, but it might take some while. He has 2 0 and 1, though, so he's definitely poised to kind of be the jungler we saw in the first game. However, I think it's, uh, Arroyo's high, Arroyo's high school, uh, AD carry here that's definitely the shining star of this game. 5 0 and 2 to start this one out on the Ezreal. Really gonna look scary. So, top lane, we're seeing the pushback. Still slight CSE for XCOM here, but middle lane, we're seeing ease up. The trade's coming in. Shockwave comes down. Heal's coming down here for the Tentran. He's trying to keep himself alive. It's too many heals to count right there. To save himself. Yeah, that shoe was just two, I think. But Lucario, though, bottom lane, here's again going. Get a nice tornado to get disengaged going. And they're able to escape with it. Didn't even have to burn any summoners. Didn't have to burn the ultimate. Just a simple tornado. And he was out of there. No heal used by Endless Witch either. And that was a really smart disengage coming out from them. You know, only blowing, only using what they needed there. And what they used was uh, very low cost compared to uh, the other abilities that had the uh, that they had the option to use there. So once again, bottom lane doing really well, and this is going to be difficult for. And had in center, and it's uh, I mean, they had the momentum going into this game. They had picked up the win in the first, in the second game. Arroyo High School after getting a dominating victory and then losing. In a little bit of a close game, but still losing to the game, losing to the team they had just dominated. Probably really rough for them going in, but they go into this game and they just come out blazing. In this team composite, uh, in this game, picking up so many early kills here, and it's uh. Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics is definitely difficult for them now. Just being so low. Because, I mean, they had to remember the early, the first game where they just lost convincingly. This game is looking to be in a similar fashion once again. Five, almost a 5,000 gold lead. About a 4,000 gold lead, actually. It's close to that. But, once again, Ario High School. Top lane varies. is pushing on the tower. He has a Nasus. He has a Siphoning Strike to just take down chunks of that tower. He has picked up the 
frozen heart, so he is really able to just <laughs> take it down. And Feral Flare actually picked up 14 minutes in here on, on I'm going in. So he gets it early, and it's, I guess it's sort of on time. Top lane below, Varius coming in, does get ganked here as XCOM is getting in onto him. There's a Pinoy coming in though, doing some damage onto XCOM. Varius is still trying to go away, does go down. Lieutenant Tran though is here, I'm going in, gets on the killing speed, not chasing after Fluffy Panda. He does get some movement speed boot buff here, and he will be able to get away. But the trade, one for one, top lane in for jungler. Lieutenant Tran gets up there to help out, gets an assist as well. But 3 0 and 1 on the Nocturne. He's really going to look scary here. Bottom lane damage once again. Broken Rain gets knocked up. Under Tower gets taken down. None of the switch is dominating now. Top lane, I'm going in. He's going to go ahead and take down this tower. Doesn't even care about the trung Trundle. Throws on the free tether. Fluffy Panda does walk away from it though. Bottom lane tower goes down as well, and this is really looking like last game now. Two towers to none in favor of Arroyo High School B, picking them up early. Six kills in the lead, and the goal is just stacking up. Manhattan Center will be able to respond as Ezov is going to be taking this middle lane. Varus is coming up here, has Lieutenant Chan right behind him, look for some damage here. Shockwave onto the two, pulls them together, but it just means they just want to keep going for more here. Is he able to get away? uses the speed buff will be able to escape had the flash as well if he needed it but i was able to walk away from that without using too much builds coming up trinity force finished 16 minutes in and actually earlier than 16 minutes i think here if i look in the chat history but trinity force very early to say the least bottom lane, uh, middle lane tower does go down and he's gonna be coming in from behind looking for a stun possibly does throw it down onto various xcom is here as well broken rain gets another kill for himself now going on for lieutenant tran pillar comes up flash away from lieutenant tran does escape and a lot of members roaming into this middle lane do pick up some kills dragons respawning in 40 seconds so might be grouping up for that xcom goes in here this is in a lot of danger though, they don't want to lose the jungler here, it does lose it, Endless Witch gets the kill, now gets ease of low, and he is just doing damage with that Trinity Force and a BF Sword to boot right now, 7-0 and 2 on Ezreal, most, uh, second most CS in the game right now, and he just did a lot of damage right there, just poured it out onto the team, and he is going to be very scary in team fights because he's going to be throwing out a lot of team fight pressure, teleport will be coming again, first teleport of the series that we're seeing here on various, doesn't work out to get a kill, but they will be able to go and look for this dragon. Alright, so dragon will be going down. Second dragon in the game. It's Ario High School's B. Ario High School B's. And once again, they're just taking these objectives in the large numbers. <laughs> and I mean, it's what we've been seeing the first game. This is pretty much the first game. They're back on their strong game here. AD carry and jungler getting fed or farmed, getting kills in general, I think. And uh, doing really well in this game. Early Trinity Force for Ezio is just an absolute monster right now. And he has the team to keep him alive, so he doesn't... isn't too scared of uh, the enemies right now. In terms of potential for dying. He could get taken down. I mean, Annie obviously has a really nice stun to throw down. And everyone else will have a lot of burst damage, but... It's just a matter if they can catch on to him with all the heals that will be coming out. Fluffy Panda up top lane taking damage from Varys. Varys is back up. I mean, he, we saw him. He wasn't doing too well in lane. He's 0-3 compared to 1-0. and zero, But he's still working well in this lane. He's starting to out-duel Fluffy Panda here. And he's starting to push back quite a bit. Definitely dangerous for Fluffy Panda here. Uh, not quite the dominating performance you saw from last game. Endless, endless Witch. Doing some damage to World of Pro. World of Pro is really scared of him right now. But XCOM will be coming in for a gank. West team by a ward. Does dash over. Trying to get after him but cannot. Unless which will be able to live from that. And Ezoff was coming down here as well as Broken Rain. And there's a lot of focus being drawn over to this bottom lane now. But it looks like they're just going to be They just went for an attempted roam or gank. Didn't quite get one and they will be going back after that. 11 to 5, 19 minutes in. This is looking like Arroyo High School's game. Uh, you know, if this, if this just goes away the first game, they will be advancing on with a 2 to 1 victory. And it's really difficult now for Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. They have the pretty much early game that they needed just to not go in their favor. Annie and Draven have to do well early game, or else uh, it's an uphill battle. 
because they're a very aggressive early game lane, but going up against that Janna and Ezio, I don't think they were expecting how much damage that could do early. And now we're seeing the trade coming on the island switch, and Willow proactive trying to trade out Rolling Death coming across, doing a lot of damage with the Soraki heal coming through as well as a summoner heal. But Willow Pro still trying to trade, gets so close to it, but Endless Witch is able to survive. And so many summoners blown right there, so many heals used as well, the Witch coming in there. If it wasn't for the Witch, Endless Witch would not have been able to duel that one out. And that should be a wake up call for him, he couldn't duel a 0-2. to two. He couldn't du duel the 0-2 to two carry when he was 7-0 and zero without some help from the Soraka Witch because he was so close to going down at the end of that. Top lane, we're seeing trades coming down here. Fluffy Panda and various. Fluffy Panda actually going under the tower. He's going to be able to pick up the skill under the tower and get away from it. It's withered, but we will be able to walk away. Now we'll be looking to take down this tower. However, we're seeing two members of... Arroyo High School B coming up to this top lane and get the gank going. There's a paranoia coming across the map. Fluffy Panda will be going down. I'm going in once again on a rampage 4 0 and 2. Stacking up on that Feral Flare and he's looking strong. Middle lane though, we're going to be seeing some damage onto the tower. Island Switch taking some damage but dealing it back. As he defends the tower. Now he wants to go in here. Shockwave will be coming in. They're going to be taking it now. First time he goes down here. However, Double Hikari and XCOM will be going down. I'm going in Avengers. His fallen AV carry EZF will be going down as well. Lieutenant Tran is here to help out. And he decided to give a kill to Lieutenant Tran after uh, I'm going in. Just got so many. Middle lane, a lot of trades going down. Bottom lane, we're going to be seeing the tower finally going down. So we're, we'll be seeing Manhattan Center finally getting three towers. But they might be losing their middle inner tower because of it. And it'll be four towers to three after this trade. Dragon in two minutes. We might be seeing that coming up soon. But looking over at item buys, there is the Mikhail's on Janna once again. Mikhail's has been a really popular item choice for Bubble Hikari, and it's not too surprising. It just works out so well when he's going for one of the heal supports. So, ooh, did he actually steal away that blue buff? I think he did. Roller Pro X. I thought I, I saw it come through, and I thought I saw the gold go over. Yeah, it did go over to Roller Pro X. Okay, I'm missing all the steals today. Whirling Death came through solo with that blue buff just in right on time. I saw it and I was like, okay, the gold went over, but I guess not. I was wrong. Oh, man, I'm just missing these seals right now. So, Raleigh's Crystal Scepter picked up by Soraka. Pretty much standing out and really useful. And this game, I mean, Bloodthirster Trinity Force. I don't the switch. And Teeth Fight T is scary. Against that Draven, it was very close, but might have changed at this point. But you know, Warlord Pro X has a uh, has a blue buff now. So Shockwave coming into middle lane. Lieutenant Tran tries to get himself with the heals. May not be enough to save him this time, or it will be. He is able to survive. T Shot Barrage coming across. I'm going in. Comes in there, but Lieutenant Tran does fall into getting the kill into Broken Rain. They trade the kills there. X come now in the middle of the enemy team, and he cannot do anything about this one. He does go down. I'm going in with another kill for himself. Now Ease Up does go down. Endless Witch gets in there to pick up the kill. It's a 3 for 1 exchange in favor of our Arroyo High School B. 9, 1, and 6, Ezreal. They are making their way over to the Baron. 23 minute Baron, it's going to happen. It should be fairly easy for them here. Man, Arroyo High School B. This is the team that we saw in the first game. They came back. They uh, took a little bit of a break, I think, for that second game. Where, not to discredit Manhattan Center, who did play very well in that second game, but... Arroyo High School B has showed up in this third game. Fluffy Panda trying to get in there, trying to take away some Baron buffs. But they just go down two members, going right back down there. 7-0 and zero on the Nocturne, 10-1 and one on the Ezreal. These are some very fed champions, so... I'm going to be seeing the Randu and Zoman coming out of Nocturne. Decides to go for some defensive stats. He also has a Negatron cloak he's sitting on. Feral Flare. Getting some nice stacks onto that with a lot of kills coming in here. He's 20 stacks onto that, so definitely doing well for himself. Only 24 minutes into the game as well. He got that Feral Flare early and was able to stack it up early. We're going to be seeing the Dragon going to go down. It's going to be the third Dragon of the game for Arroyo High School B. And should be fairly easy. Rolling Death comes across. Not able to steal this time. And Dragon is secured. So, 
And Helen Center not looking good here. Arroyo High School B is back to their old self, taking objectives, getting kills, getting fed on their jungler and AD carry. And they're just looking to carry out the rest of this game. 0 0 and 13 on Janet. And that's like the perfect score for support. As long as she doesn't, doesn't die, I think she'll be very happy with her, the results of this game. Hazen Mikhail is going to be going for an Aegis now, so we will be seeing a very heavy support build. Um, meanwhile, Broken Rain is going to be going for AP build once again on her support. She did it on Zyra. Worked very well. Did a lot of damage in the lane, but she has the most kills on her team right now. And I guess she, she kind of has to build the AP. She need, They need some damage stories. That's actually been able to get some kills with some gold. Of course, Oriana is slightly ahead of her because she does have 207 farm most CS in the game with a death cap. But they do need a few more damage to that to the side of Manhattan Center just because... Rest of the lane's not doing well. Fluffy Panda taking damage up in the top lane, but there's the gang coming down here. It's gonna be a 3v2. Trying to jump in onto this one. World of Pro getting low. Various does get the kill. 1v4. 1v5, actually. Ezak does find the kill onto Various, but Various just being that tanky, tanky nasty gets in there, gets the kill. And now we'll be seeing top lane's actually gonna get pushed right now by the side of Arroyo High School. And they're looking to take this one down. They don't have their AD carry right now, so they don't have their best damage to take it down. But he'll be coming up shortly. Actually coming in from behind for some damage. Very, very risky by him. He's able to put out a lot of damage there. Last Whisper being picked up by him. So he'll just be doing tons and tons of damage here. Trying to look for some picks behind the tower right now. They're going to be getting the two on the knockup here. Broken Rain goes so low. We'll be able to live though. Trisha Barrage not up right now, so Broken Rain will be able to survive with his life, but this tower can't say the same thing about it. It's going to be going down to be five towers to three. 50,000 gold to 36,000. It's only 26 minutes in here. As we're seeing the base push coming in here, they want it. They're not stopping. They're going for the inhibitor now. And this is a really strong pushing team comp right now. Soraka just takes down these minion waves. There's have, they have heals from Janna and Soraka. No, shields from Janna to boost some AD. Nocturne has his own AD boost. Ezio does a lot of damage to these sides because he's fed. Nasus is good for split pushing or pushing down towers and Ezio also gives the attacks buff to his allies. So they have a really good split pushing comp and they just are not uh, just a pushing comp and they can really easily wave clear a lot of these waves as well. And the fact that they're fed also helps that out and Manhattan Center not doing too hot. So Last inner tower of the game is going to be the one on, uh, the last inner tower from Manhattan Center. Looking to be taken down here, grouping up in this bottom lane. They're allowing Nasus to push it up while they're looking for some picks up, pick offs as they're staying inside the jungle. But they should just go ahead and take down this tower easily. No one is here from Manhattan Center to respond to it. And they'll be putting down the damage onto this tower. Whirling Death comes across, gets some damage in there, but the tower goes down so quickly. Lieutenant Trang gets the last hit on that one. The bananas. Do they want to go in here? Paranoia will be coming in. He goes over the wall. He's looking for the damage. Fluffy Panda's trying to get onto the back line. He's dueling with Varys. So Varys has too much damage. Shockwave coming across on the two. There's a wish coming down. Shut down. Onto I'm going in. XCOM goes low as well. He gets taken down. A double kill coming in for Endless Witch. He is looking for more. Gets under. He is looking for the triple kill. Gets it. Cannot get onto Oriana for the quadra. But this is going to be the inhibitor falling down. First inhibitor of the game. 28 minutes in. And they might be looking to push for more here, actually. Nexus Towers, they're pinging down the Nexus Towers. They're looking to end the game right now. They're getting under the tower. They're looking for ease out. They cannot get onto it. Varys is tanking up these towers, but he's able to live through it anyway. And look, it's very low. Nexus Tower is going to be able to survive. Uh, the heal's coming in big for Soraka there onto Varius, and they'll be doing damage to this top lane tower now. Fluffy Panda coming in with the home guard, looking for something, cannot catch on. And this will be the back out by Arroyo High School B as they just take huge steps in this game. First Nexus Tower 28 minutes in and they are looking really scary now. This should just be the victory for them right now because I don't see a easy way for Manhattan, Manhattan Center to get back into this. Builds will be coming in. Seeing what they go for Endless Witch gets cut off back and he has 2800 gold to buy. And Randuin's Omen actually coming out. They had two Randuin's Omens. They had, okay, so instead of Aurelio High School, it's two Randuin's Omen and a Frozen Heart. 
So pretty much nobody is going to be auto-attacking. They have Draven, Wukong, Trundle who want to auto-attack and no one's going to be able to because they have those two going down. I mean, going in though, gets caught off. Cannot find a kill for himself. Ease off with the kill. Did have to burn the shockwave for it though. And now, Shishap Raj will be coming across. Does not catch on to anybody. They're still going to be chasing after. And they back out. But Talisman as well finished up on Bubble Hikari. Unless Witch has built up his defensive item early, gets the Banshee's Veil. And as I was saying, two random ones opens and a Frozen Heart. No auto attacking going to be there for the side of Manhattan Center. And that's really just kind of destructive for the team comp. And just really well thought out, I think. So we'll be seeing middle lane. They're going to be looking for a push here once again. Tim Tran doing some damage here. Fluffy Panda taking a lot of it. There's a Talisman Ascension coming in. This is going to be the last team fight, I think, coming out here. XCOM taking a lot of damage. Bubble Car does go down. Fluffy Panda trying to get to the backline. Endless Witch with the kill. And he's still trying to go for this one. Witch does come down. Double kill coming in for Endless Witch. Good and good. Onto Ease Up. Gets the triple kill. Looking for the Quadra. Does have it taken away. It's the double kill for Varius and picks up the kill. And this is going to be the victory here. It's Arroyo High School B coming 2 to 1 against Manhattan Center. Third game of the match. And they just come. Come out big here, and MVP of this match has to be that AD carry doing just so much for his team right there, doing so much damage. And it was just really a well done game. So guys, this is going to be the best of three. Thank you for watching the High School Star League. League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs is the Swiss format round 1. And you can check out all of the information about this at our website, lol.hsstarleague.com. HS Star League, if you just want the general website, we also host tournaments for Dota 2, and StarCraft 2. So you can check it all out there. Also, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hsstarleague. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash hsstarleague. As well as subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash highschoolstarleague. You can check out all the social media links there. You can see it all as well under the Twitch player. Also, follow us on our Twitch channel, as well as subscribe to us if you want to help support the High School Star League. Also, of course, a shout out to our sponsors, Twitch TV, New Wig, MSI, Jinx, and Razor, helping put on $20,000 going into the prize pools for League of Legends, StarCraft 2, and Dota 2. Uh, that's combined prize pools, by the way. If we had 20000 for each game, I think that would be huge. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. It's been Crusader Kitten casting for you guys. You can follow me at twitter.com slash Crusader Kitten. I'll be casting here regularly for the High School Star League. So everybody, thank you for watching. Of course, come back next time for the next stream. You can find the info for that on a social media link. So, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.